look, it's a, it's a tough one, but I suppose we've played, what have we played now? Four tests in the last six months. We played two in October and we've played two against India, two years. So that's six like in four or five months. And I suppose the, the challenge for us is to find a way of getting into test mode intensely from day one. It's difficult to play two tests, then two months later play another two tests, and then three months later play another two tests. So I suppose it's time to get the test match intensely as soon as possible. Like I've said before, it's difficult to arrange a, a warm-up test match for a test match. You can't do it. Um, uh, so it's, it's, it is a challenge for us. It's probably the um, biggest frustration because uh, we know we're a better side than what we've done in the first test matches of the last couple of series. But that's just the way the shit leaves. We've just got to make do with it. Um, look, uh, we obviously need to sit down with a with a selection committee over the next day or two and try and finalise an eleven. Um, but it's difficult to say three days out. I think so. Um, it's the, a breakfast area of the day after winning a cricket game and and losing a cricket game are two totally different areas. And no, no matter how you try not to emphasise the importance of of winning because you want to focus on your processes, it is very important, we know that. And just the general vibe around a team after a good win is so much, um, there's so much more energy than, than after a loss. There's a lot of tension after a loss, a lot of reflection, a lot of what ifs, should we, should, could we have. And after a win, you just really try and emphasize the good stuff as to why you've been so successful. And, and that's the feeling I get at the moment. There's a good energy around the side and guys know they've played more to their potential, probably not at their best, but to their potential over the last test match. If we win 2-1, I'd be happy it's three series <laughs> test match, and if we lose 2-1, I'd be devastated it's not a five test match series. So, look, the same thing with when we beat India 1-0, it was very happy having two tests, but before the season, it was terrible having two tests. So, ah, whether it's three or five, it's out of our control. Yeah, look, we, I mean, we've always pride ourselves in our fielding, and and we've we've generally fielded well and taken some great catches, but it's like everything else in in the game. If you put one or two down, there's always a little bit of anxiety around that. Um, but same thing with the referrals. You get one or two referrals wrong, the next referral comes. You're thinking, oh damn, I better not stuff this and up. Let's not do it. So it's a little bit of the same type of anxiety with referrals and missing chance. And look, it's just it's part of the game. It's going to happen. No one does it on purpose. You just got to try and focus on the next ball. But it's something that we've. A little bit aware of and, and, and not trying to improve on every single day. Ah, look, I'm not really concerned about, I mean, our focus is not on Michael Clark. It's, it's making sure that, that Graham's leading the side well and, and Graham's record speaks for itself. It's very seldom that he goes through a series without making a contribution. And um, I'm talking about the bat because he makes a massive contribution as the leader. Um, so it's not something I'm too phased about. He's a quality player. His record speaks for itself and he's playing well at the moment. He's looking in good touch. He's just found ways of getting out, I suppose. It, Strangish dismissals at the moment. No, I've sort of got my 11 that I'd like to propose to the selection committee and it's for them to give the go-ahead for that or not. Yeah, very happy. I think, look, in South African conditions, the spin bowler's job is always a tough job. Um, South Africa, we, we know we are a nation of fast bowlers and, and medium fast bowlers who do a great job and that's just the way we play. Um, so the spinner's role under South African conditions is one very much of a holding role. Um, and I thought JP and Dean did a good job for us in the first test match. Second test match. Look, he's got a hundred in the middle order as well. Um, I suppose batting at six is a massive advantage for him that he has been opening because he's often going to face the second new ball. So that's a big bonus for for us to have an option like that batting at number six. So look, we need to decide on the on those things closer to the day. I saw a great banner at St George's. Did you see that one? The guy said, "I know what he did last summer." <laughs> <laughs> It was, a, it was a great banner, 49 all out and, or something. But anyway, look, ach, I don't think it makes too much difference. They've played great cricket between that test match and, and the, uh, over the last couple of months. So, look, I'm sure they'll probably look at the highlights over the next couple of days in television and see what's happened here last time. And there will be a little bit of anxiety, I suppose, but ach, that's part of it. Can we got bowlers for 90 here last time. Yeah, I was going to say, it's such a exactly, so up and down game. Yeah. Like, game. I think it was Gary's first test match in charge. And the day, the day we, we bowled him out for 40, I think it was at the hospital where his wife was giving birth. Um, so he missed it. Um, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it, it, was, it was a hell of a game. No, look, it's just great to have him around. I mean, he's a, he's a good friend and he's, a, he's 
probably the leading cricket coach in the world. Everybody wants Gary Kirsten around, and we're fortunate to have him for a certain amount of days. And it was always uh, he was always scheduled to join us for the third Test match. Um, it's just so worked out that it's one all, and it's that's a big Test match, and having him around is a big bonus for us. So very happy to have him here. I don't know. Uh, he's a he's a he's a wonderful bowler. I mean, he's been in great form for the last couple of months, and. If we get complacent against Mitchell Johnson, I think you're going to do so at your own peril. So I don't think we've nullified him at all. We've got to make sure we do our basics really well against him again on Saturday. I think a lot of our discussions before the P Test match was about how well we've done against him previously, particularly in the Test matches overseas in Australia. Um, so look, he's had an impact against South Africa before, and he probably will at some stage again. But we've also had a lot of success against him before. So. Um, uh, we can take a lot of confidence on how we played him in Port Elizabeth, but there will always be something in the back of your mind, I suppose, about knowing that he's the guy that can turn a, can turn a session around or can turn a match around, and you've got to be on your guard every single time he gets the ball. So he has to stop. Yeah, no, we have had a chat. Um, I actually saw him outside now. looks a good wicket. I think he'll probably want to keep a bit more moisture in it because it looks like it's a wicket that could be ready to play on tomorrow. So maybe a little bit a day or two ahead of schedule, so there's a lot of heat around, so I'm sure he'll be looking to get some moisture in it over the next day or so. Yeah, look, I think it's always a bit disappointing when, when, when guys sort of throw those accusations around, and look, we are, we are a seriously motivated team. I suppose we, we've we added 10% to our motivational levels after the comments that he's made, so we see that as a, as a, as a massive form of uh, motivation for us, to show him that... Um, and, and to show the Australian side that we don't need to play cricket in that way. And we, we, we pride ourselves in playing the game as honestly and as openly as possible. So we're very motivated by the comments he's made. So probably good for us.